All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tommy Reynolds, and I'm a portrait wedding photographer and photographic educator. And today, we're going to be doing a demo all about portable lighting specifically for wedding photography. Now, having the ability to show up with one light to create an image, a beautiful image, in any lighting condition is absolutely paramount for me as a wedding photographer. And I'm going to showcase to you today some of the equipment that I generally take to every single wedding to get the most out of my lighting. And it hopefully will today prove that you don't need to buy the very best or the most expensive lighting equipment out there. You can certainly create a fantastic image with very affordable lights. So let's go straight into it. So one of the things that I really want to kick off and show you first is a brand new product from Pixabro here, which is the flat pack 70 centimeter softbox here. Now, when I say flat pack, it really is flat pack. That's how it collapses down. This fits into a bag this size. And you might think, OK, well, it collapses quickly, but how, how quick does it go up? Done. That is, that is paramount for me as a wedding photographer. That is far quicker than the older system that I was using, the easy open soft boxes, which are still great systems. The more the umbrella system, where you have to kind of push your weight down and open it. This, I've not had a chance to use this at a wedding yet, but because they've just come out, they've only just been announced. But this is definitely going to come with me on my next wedding, as you can see from the bag that you just saw a moment ago. So I want to show you actually what this creates, because for something this small, it creates a beautiful image um, that we're going to show you shortly. Now, the stands, even down to the stands I want to show you today, these are the retractable stands. If you can all see, when I put the light stand down, automatically does that. I don't need to worry about having an assistant or having two arms. I can have my softbox in one hand, lift it up, and move it to a next spot, and it's done. So that, that is the light stand that I choose to use. Um, then let's look at the light. So the light is the Pika 200 Pro. Uh, we are using the round head attachment. This is an optional extra, and I'll explain why in a moment why I've gone for the round head attachment. But first, let's take an image. Let's get going. So I'm going to attach the 70 centimeter flat pack softbox. And we have, a, and we have our model today. This is Nikki. Hey, everyone, Nikki. All good. Nikki is going to be our groom today, dressed in a very smart green tweed suit, which I think looks awesome. So he's going to be our groom. And if you have the, if you have the time of the day in the morning when you are shooting a wedding to set this up, with the combination of the quick open softbox and the light stand and the Pika, you can set this up very quickly. And in fact, the Pika 200 and the mount on it goes straight into the, uh, the flat pack bag as well. I pack it all in one bag. So let's start off with taking an image. First of all, I'm going to take an image with the ambient light so that you can see what we're all seeing and show you how, in any environment, you can completely transform an environment with just one light. So first of all, we need to take one, uh, a shot uh, with the ambient light first. So I'm going to first of all take a shot without the flash. We're going to see what this ambient light is looking like. So I'm going to turn the flash off get an exposure. That's perfect, Nick. If you take one step this way, just so you're dead center, that's lovely. So we're not worrying about the light just yet. I want to just show you what this is looking like when we aren't using a flash. By the way, um, so my system, I'm using a Canon R5, and this is the 2870 f2, which is why it looks so big, if you're wondering what lens this is. I can get away with pretty much shooting an entire wedding with this one lens. I rented it at the start of the year, absolutely fell in love with it. Yes, it is big, but that's why I have this hand grip so that I can use it pretty much all day using only one lens. It's given me so much more confidence being able to shoot an entire wedding with only one lens. I digress. OK, let's take an image. First of all, uh, we're going to get a reading what the ambient would look like if I didn't have a flash on me. That's cool, Nikki. Just hold that there. So not very pretty when you've turned up to uh, an environment where uh, the lighting's not very good. We've all been there as wedding photographers. Less than ideal lighting. This is why having a, a, this set up, which can create a beautiful image anywhere. So now let's take an image where we actually use the flash. But before I do that, I need to make sure I kill all of the ambient light first. So I'm going to bring my ISO down to 100, the lowest it can go. Let's try around 5.6 at 1 60th of a second, and we'll take another shot. OK, hold that, Nikki. That's lovely. OK. OK, I'm have, uh, 
that's pretty much all the ambient gone. So I now know that anything I add after this is only going to come from the lighting that I've got. So we're not going to get any of this other lighting influencing the scene. So let's bring this in. I'm going to start with a roughly 45 degree angle. And my go-to setup, I said this yesterday, so this is a, um, I think it's a great tip when you're working with any softbox. But when you're using, it, when you're using a softbox and you want to try and find that, that nice sweet spot or a good starting place, I would generally go to the model's eye line. Now, Nikki's a bit taller than me, so I'm going to have to go on my tiptoes. What I will aim to do is where the, where the bottom of the softbox starts is where I want to be able to see Nikki's eyes. When I can see Nikki's eyes, that for me is a good starting point in terms of seeing that nice catch light in the eyes. So I'm going to go a little bit taller. That's it. Yeah, about there. We're going to slightly side on. That's lovely. Uh, we're going to start there. Now, I have a flash meter, but I don't take a flash meter to a wedding. So we're going to eyeball this, and we're going to just uh, go with the flow, because that's what would happen in the real world. All right, let's take a test shot. I'm at 1 16th power. I have no idea what this is going to look like. We'll go from there. OK, Nikki, hold that. OK. OK. Instantly different from the previous shot that we just saw there with the ambient light. With only one light, you can really totally change this up. I'm going to turn the power up slightly, and I'm going to move it slightly around this way. Okay, That's it, Nikki. Hold that. OK. OK, that's much nicer. I much prefer that. Now, when you're working with, with uh, grooms in the morning, generally, I will say your keyword is to fidget. That's always my keyword. So what I'm going to get you to do, Nikki, is every time you hear the click, I want you to change it up for me. This is always a good, even if you're working with a professional model, to give this tip is to fidget. So every time you hear the click, Nikki, I want you to fidget. That's it. And then towards me. That's it. Hold that. And let's have you face towards this way instead. Hold that. That's it. And back towards front on towards me. Hold that. And then. It's nice and straight up, looking nice at that, all that. Now, when you are working with one light, there's a few tips you can do to really change the, to truly change the image. So at the moment, I'm directly front on with Nikki. If I take a step towards the light, we're going to see less contrast. If I take a step away from the light, we're going to see more contrast. You don't need to change the modifier if you want to get more contrast. If we are using uh, one light and we're at a wedding, time is everything. So I, all I've done is I've taken a few steps this way. I'm going to take the same shot. I'm not going to change the settings, the power on here. We're going to take the same again. But now, Nikki, you're going to look towards me this way. That's it. Hold that. And if we compare it to this one, we can see we've got way more contrast now. And all I've done is taken about one, two steps. Take it again. Two steps. Now I'm center. One, two. Now I'm stepped left, and we should now see less contrast here. That's all I've done. So when you are working with one light, it's very, it, very easy to just change it up. You don't need to have multiple modifiers with you uh, or anything like that if you want to just get away with just using the one light. Now, if you want to experiment with white balance, and this is why I've used the round head in particular, if I take the... Uh, if I take the peaker out, OK, so the reason I, I have the round head is because I've got the round head accessory kit that you can buy separately with the Pika 200. So I've got a gel in here, and it's very easy to now gel this. It's even easier than MagMod. I used to use MagMod, but now this is even easier because if you use MagMod, you've got the MagMod, uh, the handles at uh, the either side, and then that wouldn't go back in there. So you'd have to take the whole thing apart. Again, speed is everything here. If I need to uh, gel this, I can use the accessory kit, pop that on, and now I can put that straight back in here. So now I've put a grid, uh, sorry, a gel in there. And I'm going to now change the white balance on my camera to tungsten to create a, a, different, uh, a different color in the background. So if I now go to my settings on my camera, and I'm going to change I was on cloudy. I'm now going to change it to tungsten. And I'm going to take the same shot. So if you come a little bit this way, Nick, that's it. Yeah. OK, same again. That's it. Hold that. OK, so the one thing you'll see first is it looks darker. Because of that gel, uh, you are going to lose a little bit of light. So I'm going to turn up maybe a stop, maybe a stop and a half. So I'm now at a quarter power. Hold that, Nikki. Love that. 
OK, lovely. So we can see that by using the gel, and we can create a little bit of a blue tinge in the background there just by using that, using that gel in that, um, with that tung tungsten in there as well. But let's just say that you don't want to use a softbox. Maybe the softbox is too big. Another nice thing about the accessory kit that, that you can get with this is you can, gr you can put a grid on there as well. So again, if I take this off, and the accessory kit is just over here. So the accessory kit comes with all sorts of different things, including the gels. It comes with a grid. It comes with barn doors as well. I can easily stack them as well and put the grid on here. So let's just say you don't want to worry about a softbox. Maybe the softbox is too big, and you don't want to worry about this. If I take this off, move this out of the way. So this is an S bracket. I would totally recommend getting one of these as well. If you've got a Pika 200, this is definitely worth getting. Not only can you put your Pikas in here, you can put your City 300s in here, and you can obviously put your speed lights in here as well. So I'm going to leave that bare bulb. If you want to just be very minimal and create, again, that moody look, even more moody, because now we've reduced that light, the, that light source. So if I now line this up again, I'm going to take the gel off and go here. That's it. All right. So what I predict before I take the photo is it's probably going to be too bright because we're no longer going for a softbox anymore. So I'm going to bring it down, down by two stops as an educated guess. OK, Nikki, looking this way. That's it, hold that. Uh, I'm just going to change my white balance back. There you go, same again. Hold that. So we can see very dark, very moody. You can almost create, uh, go a day to night conversion. So if you are in a situation where you want to create that really moody look with only this setup, you can do that with just simply a grid and one light. Very easy and minimal uh, to set up. When you have all of these in your arsons, you really can create all sorts of different images. And it can all pack away very easily in a backpack or as you saw in a, in a flat pack here. So as I say, we, uh, that's the City 300. We've got the Pika 200 Pro that we're also using. And if you do want to learn any more about the equipment that we were using, then as I say, Dom's got a leaflet with all of the equipment here. If you do have any other questions about any of the stuff that you've, got, that you've seen here, then you've got the sales team that are more than happy to help you out with anything that you have. So thanks ever so much for coming and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much, folks. <laughs>